case. We got a Cody Bisbee case, and uh, she's another person is out there. There's boots on the ground. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hold on. Let me uh, cut these sounds off. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, guys, she's another uh, person that was out there uh, boots on the ground uh, and it helped with the search for uh, Cody Bixby. Okay. And as a matter of fact, y'all might remember her. Y'all remember when I first uh, did this story, uh, she was one of the ones that I first showed y'all her videos on and I told y'all I was going to reach out to her. And uh, she finally checked a message of y'all and saw my <laughs> messages. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I understand why she gave a little background of her and uh, I'm happy to hear uh, what she's doing down there, and uh, ma'am, you got my blessings. Hopefully, you will get elected down there for what you're trying to do. <laughs> Hopefully, you will get elected. Okay. Um, first thing first, how do I pronounce your name? I can say Jones, but how do I say the first name? <laughs> it's Uganda Sample Jones. Uganda. Just like the country. Okay, so where are you from? Where are you actually from? I'm uh, from the eastern shore of um, Maryland, Virginia, but. I've been here in Newport News, Virginia, Hampton Roads area for the past 15 years. Okay, so the name you're gonna, so that's not from like down there in uh, um, <laughs> Africa or something like well, that. When I hear that name, is, that's the first thing I think about. That's what I think, but that's where you're yeah, from. It, it, it is a country in Africa. Um, I actually got my name because my grandmother visited, thought it was beautiful. And that's it how is. I, it's unique. I got my it, name. It is unique. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, got well, I'm named after a country. All right, now, hey, what the, hey, that's the power right there, I guess. That's the power right <laughs> there. All right. So you're going to thank you, dear, um, for joining me and speak with me about this situation and whatnot. So let's get right into it. Mm -hmm. First question I ask everybody when I do interviews is, how... When did you get ear of this? How did you get wind of it? Who brought it to your attention? Or did you just happen to watch the news one day and you heard about this story? How, how did it get brought to you? How did, how did it hit your ear about this? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm an avid news watcher, so I believe it hit <laughs> okay. the news okay. um, that Monday I saw it. Mm -hmm. So I went out there immediately, just me, you know, being as a mother and thinking, you know, baby Cody had just walked out the house or what have you. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of speculation, but I knew that the ownership was on me. The police department okay. said that they were um, taking 50 volunteers. And because I own my own business, I was able to flex my schedule to be there every day. Um what happened at the beginning is that, you know, the police department said that they only needed 50 volunteers. And I was one of the first ones on a list the first day. Okay. But so we went out with the police department and, you know, was strategizing on different areas to go out and search. They were mm -hmm. giving us their spill on how to be safe and not, you know, damage any evidence that we may see. Okay. Um, okay. I continue to come out there the next day. I'm sorry. You asked me how I got involved, so it was through the news. No, 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 I'm about no, no. To go you, you do it right. You answer right. You answer right. No, no, no. You answer okay. right. You answer, you answer right. right. I, I just, I was asking. I won't get to that next. You know, of course, we're gonna get into yeah. how you got involved. But I just want to know. You know, when you first heard about, how did you first hear about it? But you answered it. You said you heard the news, and mm -hmm. you know, actually, you were going the right path. You lead right into it. So <laughs> you said as a mom, you heard everything. So uh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah, but so it was just matters it. of the heart that first pulled me out there. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I couldn't imagine a baby outside. And I believe that first night it was really cold outside and then it was mm -hmm. raining and the weather wasn't good. So I immediately jumped into action. I was looking in woods and different, you know, waterways to try to see if maybe he had crawled under a playground or stairs, just scared. So um, it was good that first couple of days because we were working with the police department and building strategy together. Mm. Well, let me ask you, uh, Ms. Jones, let me ask you this. Uh, I've been, Like I told you before we did the recording, you know, I've been doing this for like about four or five years, probably more than that. You know, sometimes you do stuff so long, you be like, dang, how long I've been doing this? Mm -hmm. uh, when I hear stories like this, First thing on my mind, 
okay, they did it. Because we mm -hmm. I'm hearing this story too often. Uh, mm -hmm. Last time I saw my child, it was last night, or blah, blah, blah. But then when I woke up, miraculously, they disappeared. And I was just like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that never sounds right to me. So mm -hmm. when you first heard the story, how it, it was played after allegedly by Corey, what was your thoughts about that? Um, <laughs> what I want to say, because, you know, my position, it, I look at facts, what I do in my life, with my business and mm -hmm. my community work, we look at the facts. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to look at, okay, the father says that this is the last time, whether it's right or wrong. I take my personal feelings outside of that. Okay. And mm -hmm. I looked at the child, what if he did walk out the house? Where would a child be? Because the mission and the fact is that a four-year-old baby is outside where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really stay focused or try to stay focused um, on the mission at hand because that's what we were there for. That's what pulled me out my house to look for Cody. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up taking that position, like, when I started doing the lives and things like that, because the, I believe it was the third day or, okay, it was the third day. The police had us um, volunteer two days. Mm -hmm. And then, well, they called us in. And then I believe it was the third day. They, um, well, they weren't calling anyone. We were seeing volunteers come in from, like, different areas of the um of the state but the community people that were right there weren't being utilized and it was a lot mm. of people that were just standing around and i saw how we were getting lost in the what if this happened or what if this happened a mm -hmm. lot of speculation mm -hmm. you know <laughs> everyone had every some uh, of an idea of what was happening Mm. So I wanted to rope that in because we still had the momentum and the energy. So what I started doing is working with the organizations that were out there. Um, BLM 757 was out there. There was individuals that were coming out and they were like, what do we do? We just want to help. And because with my business, Empower All, we do community engagement strategies. So we already have a relationship with the police department that we're working with liaisons to engage the communities that need it the most. We just took those strategies and applied it to this situation to organize the groups and the people that were out there to be able to work effectively for looking for coding. That okay. meant being a liaison with the police department, looking at the areas that they have canvas, and then we go on our areas that we want to canvas and come together so we're not being redundant. Okay, um, gotcha. Gotcha. You know, so I really took an organizational lead um, that first seven days. Okay, okay, and I I I, I believe you are right because uh, I believe that was the same night when I was showing your video mm -hmm. about everything. Somebody did come in there and say, "Hey, Chris, we got a sixteen people came down there and uh, they just had us standing around because I guess the." the 50 minimal thing or whatnot. And I asked, you know, what did they find let y'all search or what happened? I can't remember what was mm -hmm. to come back to that. I had to go back and replay it. Yeah. But you yeah. just confirmed it. You know, they had a lot of people down there, but they, they had just a lot of people standing around. They only, I guess they mm -hmm. only took the 50 at the time and people yeah. didn't know what to do. So yeah. there the wasn't term. any real engagement with the community as far as um, saying, okay, well, we need a community to do X, Y, and Z in partnership with the police department. That's what I wish I, we would have had more of is that communication. Whereas mm -hmm. I think they looked at one organization and was like, okay, well, they're leading all the people. Let me give them something, some information and get them out the way. And when they were tired of dealing with that one person, it all communication stopped, which was unfortunate for the community because there were still people and there's still people that are out there searching for matters of their heart. They're looking mm. because they have feelings. They they have an idea or, or, oh, I think he might be here, you know, whether it's intuition or what have you. I feel like those efforts still need to be organized in a way with part um, partnership with the police department so that we're not... <laughs> for lack of better words, um, 
Damn I, I, I like the investigation. I like, I, like but... I like how you do that little that little grin you do before you say. <laughs> I can tell you you try to choose your words carefully. But I understand your <laughs> position. I understand. I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but you know we understand. We see now in hindsight. Well, you know those things were evident beforehand that things weren't handled properly throughout the investigation. But I feel like if we had those conversations with the community and all of us working together for the common goal, which was to find Cody, then it would have came, we had would have had a better impact than what we have now. Because we know things like the Amber Alert was an issue. And whether you agree with it met the criteria or not, the fact remains that we have a missing four-year-old baby. Absolutely. And that we were walking like not even five miles away from um, where it happened, a half a mile, and people didn't even know it was a missing child because a lot of people don't watch the news and they're right. not on Facebook. Right. Right. I talked to one lady and she lived right along the waterway and just at, she had cameras that were right there. I said, ma'am, can we see your cameras? She was like, okay, I had no idea it was a missing child. Only thing she was worried about is watching Pat Sajak. She watched her, um, her Wheel of Fortune <laughs> and she was good. So we have to devise, that's why we start our business. We have to find ways to engage people who are hard to reach now to get the information out. I want you to understand that's one of the reasons why I ask when we're doing my interviews and people might think that's a crazy question. Why would you ask them, you know, how they hear it? But that's one of the reasons what you say right there, because even though it may be in your neighborhood, people don't watch the news like that. They don't exactly and you we're know. not talking to our neighbors like we used to mm -hmm. we used to have a sense of community where you knew your neighbor you knew what was going on you can go and ask them and y'all had those conversations about the community and that mm -hmm. doesn't happen any long people are in their their little silos and COVID just made it worse yeah. so we yeah. have to get back comfortable with those conversations I, I agree with you on that. Even me, for somebody who sit behind the computer and do what I do, you know, or maybe I probably start doing things like that too. But a lot of stuff that happens down here in my town, it'd be way across the other side of town and whatnot. You know, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard about the story about the young man that uh, killed his baby mom and tossed the child away in the river. You know, and I, yes. I said, Lord you know, have mercy. I mm -hmm. said, you know, mm -hmm. Memphis, we are number one on them. We probably in the top 10. One time I did something, they say we were number one, but we made it fail down some, but still the fact that we, I think we probably in the top 10 or top 20 as crime. Mm -hmm. I never heard a story that ratchet down here in Memphis. I was just like, Jesus, mm -hmm. wow. And I remember I got the Amber Alert to that story, but I, I think I was at work when I got it. But when I got mm -hmm. home like later that day, I didn't know it they got that serious. You know, that was some, yeah. gee, man, you, talk about some mm, real that's some madness stuff. yeah you know that's that's different wow well uh, again guys uh you know for those who gonna be looking at this later i'm speaking to uh, miss uganda and uh, again if y'all remember who if y'all been following me as i've been covering the story y'all remember the first person videos i played was hers and if y'all need the link i'll put it in my comment section um y'all can go back and check out some of her videos um and speaking of that miss jones um, because I'm trying to catch up with the timeline when I'm watching your stuff. Because uh, mm -hmm. your video was where I first heard about this alleged gold car that you mm -hmm. said somebody shared this information with you about this alleged gold car. Now, did somebody say that to you specifically, or just got back to you that it's supposed to be this gold car and this mysterious man and woman went to the trunk and it seemed like they tossed mm -hmm. something. And they got out of Dodge real fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, was this told to you directly? No. So oh, when oh. let's explain that day. We were out Please canvassing. Please do, because I'm like, man, <laughs> I was like, that's, was, that's scary. That's scary. Yeah, that, that's very scary. But it speaks to the engagement and dedication because people were going door to door and just telling, you know, letting it know awareness that there was a missing child, that there is a missing child. And, um, that's where the story was shared with a group that was canvassing that area. So we were on the other side of the neighborhood. Um, when the police came out there, that's when I was called to come out 
And that's when I was actually sharing my video. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't said to me. That's what someone stated. However, I cannot confirm that. Mm -hmm. I told you I only speak in facts. So, right. <laughs> you know, right. I can't confirm whether someone said that or not because I was not there. And when I got to the, that mm -hmm. point, it was a... Um, I saw police officers, they were dredging the area. They were out with dogs and, and looking to see what they could find. Mm -hmm. But um, nothing was found out to that area. So when I was filming, I was filming what was actually being, what was actually happening. Right. And then it was, you know, people around us that were having, sharing their thoughts on what happened. And then um, Cody's aunt was actually there and she, we, she shared her story Um they, they were out there boot boot to boot with us, you know, going in the woods looking for him. Cody, not only Cody's aunt, they had a whole carload of people that were coming down from D.C. So the, just the love and the, the dedication of the family. And I know, you know, a lot of things, whether he did whatever, however you feel, the family was out there with us and their actions showed that their mission is the same. We would need to find Cody. Uh, the auntie, that's uh, Corey's sister you're speaking on, right? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't too fond of her at first, but, you know, after uh, the story getting to where it is now, I had to tell mm -hmm. people I, I got to back up. Gotta back up yeah, because we don't gotta know. Up, and yeah. when you're in that situation where everyone is attacking you and your brother, someone that you love, and you feel like, you know, this isn't something that they would do while you feel an attack. I told us that, baby, you need to go get a lawyer. That's the first thing you need to do. Oh, so you, you don't want to suggest that to You suggested it to Absolutely. I'll suggest that to anyone. If you're in a position that you cannot articulate your words properly, go get someone who was trained to do so. Because you don't want anyone tripping up your words because you're talking okay, out well, of passion. Okay. Well, that, that, that's understandable, then. Because uh, mm -hmm. my thing at first, a lot of people think at first was, why would she go get a lawyer? And my th I would like that too. Why would you go get a lawyer? Because here's my thing, you're gonna, and I, and I hope you understand. Mm -hmm. The story itself just don't make any sense. It just doesn't. And mm -hmm. I had to say, even for her, ma'am, if you heard how this story is being put out there, even you as his sister got to say, Corey, what you're telling me doesn't make any sense. You know, mm -hmm. if... If, uh, cause here's the main thing I like to point out with these stories and I'm pretty much sure you as a mother, you may, you may or may not agree, but I'm putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Um, if the child never walked off before and went off, then you have to ask yourself, what would make him or her do it now? If they never mm -hmm. done it before, what would make them do it now? And that's the thing I'm putting out there. That's just me. I don't have any children, but however though, mm -hmm. if the many times I have watched my sister, and played mm -hmm. the father role to her, you know, if she never walked off or wander off without my supervision, then what would make her do it all of a sudden? You know, mm -hmm. we had to think about that. So that was my gripe with her, ma'am. You know, I know this is your brother and I get it. You don't want him to look bad. I get that. But even you as his sister had to sit down and think, Corey, something ain't right. Why is, and mm -hmm. then you got to think about it too. Why is Cody missing, but the other one's not? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so that was my gripe with her. And I was getting kind of frustrated with it because then people was coming telling me, you know, she going at the moment. And I said, for what? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and that's why ahead, I say ahead, when you're ahead. in that height of what's going on, who knows how you will react. And mm -hmm. that's why, you know, like I said to her and people that were out there, if you can't articulate it, get someone who's trained to do so because every, people can take your words and come up with every story to satisfy their agenda, that's true. That's true. you know, and I understand what you're saying. Like something just ain't right, but the father admitted that he left the children. He said it was Absolutely. Absolutely. and people were attacking him for that. Um, whoa, what was it? I'm sorry. Oh, that was you. Okay. I thought that was me. I'm like, uh Oh, malfunction. <laughs> yeah, I have a call coming. Oh, okay, okay. Coming through. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, if the um, 
Oh, that's my contractor. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. if the I've seen where mothers are burnt out, single mothers are burnt out. We put a lot of um emphasis on mothers, but Corey had custody of his children. He's a single father. And we talk about mothers being burnt out, they need help. But I feel mm -hmm. like I hope what people will take out of this conversation is that we have to give support to this people our neighbors pay attention to what's going on and if we see that they're burnt out offer support offer help um I, I don't agree with you know leaving your children for a long periods of time and things like that what you know i just don't do that but i, I hope we'll, instead of judging him look at he's a veteran and the things that he has done and how could we make sure that these type of things don't happen again. Whether, you know, I've heard things about trauma, he has trauma things. Okay, so why aren't we talking about providing support or funding to organizations that deal with mental illness and trauma or that support people, single parents, that might just need a break? That's what I hope comes out of this conversation instead of a lot of judging and, and, and accusations. And you know what? And I'm, I, I'm going to agree with you with that when you said that. I'm going to agree mm -hmm. with you on that. But now here's where I may part away with you a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. You can, it's one of the situations that, you know, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink. And here's what I say in this situation. True. Here's what I say in this situation. Y'all could put this in place and hopefully it does get put in place. But when people refuse to get the help, it's almost like it's a failure. So yeah. Yeah, we can put this out there, but if the people refuse to get the help and you put it out there for them to get the help, you know, then what's next? That's true. What's That's next? True. You and know? When you're, Cause I had this conversation. I know we're, we're kind of getting off the topic, but no, I, think, I, I think it all goes in. I think it all goes in. So speak your mind. That's yeah. why I got you here for Speak your mind. I think but it all goes in. I had this conversation and one thing I found in this area is that we're a very transient community mm -hmm. and we have a lot of many people who are first generation that moved here from rural areas like North Carolina, Eastern Shore, places like this, Waverly County, Virginia, places like this. What I'm going to say is the resources are there. But if you don't have the right people, the trusted messengers that are going to explain to people who don't know, like you don't know anything about banking or budgeting until someone is that introduces that to you. Right. And if it's not right. taught to you in right. school, how are you going to know? So I when agree. you become an adult, you know, you're trying to balance bills and things like this and you don't get it until someone says, well, let me get you in this financial literacy class because it can teach you X, Y, and Z, how to do things mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that our conversations are solution-based and that we're looking for the light instead of, like, judging. And like I said, uh, again, I could agree if the point is being mm -hmm. made. That, that, I mean, cause that's pretty much like parenting. How would your mm -hmm. child would know unless you don't teach, unless you teach them? You know, that's right. so like me and you grew up, somebody had to teach us how to walk. Somebody had to teach us how to tie our shoes. Somebody had to teach us how mm -hmm. to do a tie, which to this day, I still don't know how to tie a damn tie. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but somebody had to teach us, you know, all this stuff. So, yes, I agree with you. And, you know, and if you do get your people together, y'all get some resources like that after where you say where you at. I think that's a, a big step mm -hmm. in helping people who are dealing with that because that's one of the things that, that people are questioning does Corey have mental issues that people don't know about, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't say, I don't know. And that what people looking at about him being an ex vet. Maybe he is dealing with, you know, some of that trauma or whatnot. But see, here's the thing that gets me though. When you look at a lot of pictures from Corey, mm -hmm. his emotions are not showing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, it's just a blank stare. Every time uh -huh. any picture you see of him, it's just this yeah. blank stare. And you be like, fair. you just be like, what the? Okay, what is really going on with this dude? And to mm -hmm. say that your child out of burden, I, I, I can't rock with that. I can't what I can't because here's my thing. And I understand what you're saying about, you know, 
We talk about burnt out single moms. We need to start giving uh, support for like father stuff like that. I totally agree with you on that. But the thing is, though, as a man and a woman, you know, you had to think about this. Use your child once too. So, you know, you got on a lot of people nerves as well. So to say that there was a burden, you didn't know your responsibilities. Once you pregnated somebody and the child came into the world, you go to tell me you didn't know that. You didn't know they was going to sometime they going to make you put your hair out. You know, <laughs> so I'm not a father. Even I know that, you know, that mm -hmm. dealing with children. Yes, they're going to be, um, they're going to get on your nerves a lot of time, but to say that they are burdened, I, I, I can't fly with that. that. That's kind of foul to say yeah. that, you know, but the, the words, the yeah. words are very harsh. What he mm -hmm. said, but I mm -hmm. have seen actions it, for lack of better words. I've seen mother or people, single parents who are burdened. They might not be able to articulate it that way, mm -hmm. but you, and you say if they're cussing their children out at school, yes. they're fine. Yes. I mean, not in school, at yes. school, at school and then in, in the grocery stores and stuff, and they're dragging them along, and there's no mm. real nurturing because they're burnt out by society and life. So they're burning, although they might not say it. Mm -hmm. I, I know mothers that will leave their children at home and run to 7-Eleven because it's a burden to drag two car seats in the store. And, and if you take your kids to the store then someone, and leave them in a car, someone might say something about that. So they run out. So mm -hmm. where is the support system for them? And that's where I want this, conver you know, the conversations to go mm -hmm. that, you know, we don't know where cool Cody is and we wish that the father would have more information. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But what if he doesn't? Where, how are we going to move forward? Well, how are we going to learn from this situation and make sure that there's not another Cody? And, and you know what? And that's one thing I've been preaching on my platform. You know, what can be done to prevent this and unfortunately, nobody has to an answer because it's just like once we get over this story, there's gonna be another story that's gonna come right behind it with the same mm -hmm. thing. It's gonna be another come right behind it. So, I guess the the question would be now is can it be stopped? You might can limit the percentage of it happening, but can it really be stopped? And my thing is this: as far as Corey goes, if you're the last one that's seen him, then you're the last one to know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, to me, you know where he's at, mm -hmm. you know, so he holds the key to this and finding this young man. Now, why he's not coming out talking, just telling people, hey, I know where he at. I had no idea. But my thing is, I said to people, you know, I, for some reason, I just feel like he's sitting back milking it out and see how long it's going to go. And once it get too hot, maybe he will start talking. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. But mm -hmm. let me let me let me ask you this since we speaking about Cody, because uh we had two latest updates was a jacket was found behind the apartments and I just recently saw something where they claim mm -hmm. bones was found. What do you think about this? I appreciate the people who are still out canvassing. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a, a point when we really look at what we're doing and agreed agreed, agreed. every jack because there's plenty of children that leave jackets everywhere mm -hmm. um there was a point where traffic was stopped on the bridge because it was a mattress floating and they're like oh well good we gotta look in it during the middle of what I'm going to say is during the middle of the investigation when we realized that we weren't getting real communication from the police department and, you know, strategy on where to look, we started, we created a woods team and those are the people that were going in the woods and then we created a canvas team. And um, the Canvas team, their main goal was awareness to get the information out. We mm. provided them with flyers mm -hmm. and things like that. I feel like it. Where does it stop? New Hampton is over 500 acres of woodlands, wetlands. We can search all those wetlands, and then we can move to Newport News and search all search all our woods in Newport News, and then go to Suffolk and search all those woods. But where does it stop? Um, 
I feel like the answers do lie with someone, whoever that person is. And our job as community now is to keep Cody's name in the forefront mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone knows because uh -uh, Amber Alert still hasn't been issued. So mm -hmm. making sure the people that we know in different areas and DC and North Carolina, the different areas, see his picture. I know the police department have released a, a new picture. Make sure they see his picture and then encourage them to share the information. Because when we were canvassing, we came across a young man that said, yeah, it's sad, you know, and like, I know Cody, I take my my brother over there to, to, um, to play with him. Really? And I, was like, well, man. Really? I said, have you, I said, have you played with him past um, New Year's? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, baby, that's information that the FBI needs because wow. you don't have a wow. that it, but it takes those type of conversations and just talk to people in awareness. And then I had to encourage him. I had to stand there and ask them to call the, the FBI number because even that, you know, we ain't calling no police freely. You have to encourage people and, and to, to just share what they know because we always, people think, oh, I don't know nothing. That ain't going to help. That little piece of information will show that, well, he has been around since Christmas. Oh yeah, they can they can nip that in the bud because some people are saying they believe Cody was missing way before he reported it. Exactly. So that that's what I'm here for. That's what we do. People who are still canvassing, you know, it's beautiful. But um, at some point, we have to look at what we're doing. And it, our part now, what we are doing, we're not physically out there in the woods anymore because. You know, I scratched, we scratched our legs up. It was, I can imagine. <laughs> thorns, I can imagine. Oh my goodness. I can it imagine. It was thorny bushes. It was, it was different. Uh, and, um, but I, anyone who is still out there, cause we still go door to door. Um, mm -hmm. I still provide flyers. Our organization is providing flyers to people who are, um, taking small groups out to go door to door to get the awareness out right. and to still just keep Cody's name in the forefront. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are listening to this now, I am speaking with Miss Uganda Jones and she's one of the people that's been out there uh, searching. Uh, speaking of which, are you still out there searching now? Where's, where, where's the last time you went out there? I went out there last Saturday, but I'm not going, like I said in the, um, in the articles, I, the organized effort amongst all of the organizations what mm -hmm. we were doing that stopped after about seven days and like i said there are people that i know there's a camp cody group and things like that but mm -hmm. i'm here to support the people who are out doing their own personal searches because gotcha. we have the the intuition of oh i just want to look here or i want to ask this community so that's who we're here to is support the people as a whole. If they need flyers, then we can get them flyers. Um, it, we have some ponchos left. We have some awesome people that, you know, donated things like um, ponchos when it was raining to us. And we still have that available. So I want to awesome. get it out to the smaller groups that are working um, to look for Cody. Well, ladies and gentlemen, y'all heard me, Shigunu. You out there uh, working? Uh, or search of working, Jesus, uh, searching for Cody. You know, hey, she said, hey, you got people bringing in supplies. Y'all go holler her, and uh, she will provide to y'all what y'all may need in the help for the search for Cody. So again, you're gonna thank you for what you're doing out there, you and your okay. people. Uh, and I guess uh, to kind of wrap this up because I. I guess there's really not much to be said because we don't really have no major, major updates, you know, and I did see the updated photo of him. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the photos I saw, I'm, I asked the question, like, this picture looks photoshopped because the mm -hmm. whole background just white like that. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. they, 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 don't, they don't look right to me. You know, not saying that there's not an updated picture of him. We just don't, 
sit well with me yeah. that is looking the way mm -hmm. that it's looking, you know. And it, I, I thought that as well, but it may mm -hmm. have been that they had to crop that other children out of the picture if he was in a picture with okay. other children. That, that, that makes uh, sense, yeah. The way it looks, because I know people say he looks sad and stuff, but he does. I remember when I had to drop my children off to preschool or daycare, <laughs> and I left them, and they had to make the take the picture for their little identification tag, uh -huh. and none of my children smiled because they didn't want to be dropped off. You know, <laughs> so they were like, "Ma, I know you about to set me up. You about to leave me here with these folks?" So. I, you know, I just think a different way because I know people are saying, well, he looks sad and this and that, but I remember raising my babies in those moments that weren't so pretty with them, you know. <laughs> so, um, I just want to, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Another no, phone fine. call. <laughs> but I just want people to, to open their mind It didn't look a different direction and just stay focused on, we still have a four-year-old baby that is missing and um, we really need to make sure that people in other areas, other states are aware of that. Well, I mean, Jones, I, and I get what you're saying on that because I remember, ooh, I'm at my first day of school and my dad had dropped me off. I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I had an urban uh, time Yeah, I was a boy. It was, just, it was just so <laughs> dramatic. But he's not a, but, but Ms. Jones, with his picture, though, it's like every last one of them, he's not smiling, you know? And mm -hmm. there could be something that could not be, it could not be, but. Every picture I have seen of Cody, he is mm -hmm. not smiling. He looks sad, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I'm pretty much sure with all your children pictures, dear, I mean, they don't look sad. I know you got some that no, they're actually don't. smiling. But every picture that has been put out there with Cody, he just seems so sad. You yeah. Know? And so, it really pulls on our heart strings and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean to sound insensitive. I just, again, want us to stay focused and stay away from the... Is, um, the assuming what mm -hmm. it could be, you know, and and that's and that's what I got to tell my audience. You know, uh, with a lot of us um, YouTubers or whoever, it's all speculation. We don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows mm -hmm. what happened unless Corey comes out and say, "Okay, I'm ready to confess." If he yeah. did it, you know, but everything just theories and speculation. I want to keep letting people know, guys, because I don't have the answers. The only thing I do is just report. What the updates is, I try to get to speak to y'all, and I thank y'all for coming and speaking and to sharing y'all thoughts about what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the last thing I guess I would like to get your thoughts on is when they came out that the police mishandled. Guys, mm -hmm. the noise y'all hearing, she's getting phone calls, you know, and in her <laughs> position. I can understand why she's getting them, you know, and if she wants to speak about her position, then I'll let her speak on it. Uh, but when they came out and say, hey, we fumbled, this man mm -hmm. did ask for legal representation and he was denied. Mm -hmm. In the position that you were in, dude, you heard that. Please mm -hmm. tell me how you felt when you heard that, what you thought about that. I was, I thought, uh-huh, I was right. <laughs> because um, when we were out there with boots on the ground, I said that this investor, I said, I pray they got it right because it seems like this investigation is moving more towards um, <clears throat> keep protecting the department. It, 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 it was... It was more so, um, okay, the strategy, whether it was there or not, uh, they had packed up. And I know they, they had told the public and in a press release, press conference and said that um, it was going to be, um, they're still going to be working, looking for him. And they did, they, you know, they were looking in different areas, Gosman Hope Park and different areas of the city. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a, a, a command center any longer. But I just knew that something wasn't right. They had moved to more of protecting the mm. department than investigating the situation. So you already had a feeling that they were they fumbling in there somewhere. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Because uh, that's one thing I went hard on, too, because uh, we had their first press conference. And let me ask you, was that you in the background at the press conference? <laughs> was that you? Mm. No, I was actually searching. Okay, no. gotcha, gotcha. Okay, because <laughs> I was like, uh, because he, 
it, he thoroughly explained like, hey, you know, well, Corey is a grown man, you know, he understood his rights. And I was just like, okay, but they keep asking the same question. Like, guys, he made himself clear that mm -hmm. this man didn't ask for legal representation. So if he didn't ask for it, then I don't know what, what answer are y'all looking for. But then mm -hmm. when he came out and said, we messed up, I said, oh my God, wow. So they did mess up. Yeah. You yeah. know, I was like, and I said, guys, whoever that was in the press conference, I got to take back. I'm a man of my word. If I'm wrong, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. So I got to step back. Y'all was right. So apparently mm -hmm. he was denied. And I, that's what I said, you know, okay, I got to step back off the sister because she's doing what she's supposed to do. Yeah, she's protecting her she family. She's protecting her, her family, name her brother, or whatever case. And I said, hey. I got to step back. And I also said to the audience, if it does come out that Corey did not have anything to do with this, I would support him too. I'd be like, hey guys, my bad. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it. So let's give him our support. You know? But as of right now, today proved that he didn't have nothing to do with it. You know, I'm still looking at him side eye, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was crazy when they came out and said, you know, we, we messed up. The guy we mm -hmm. had on the case, uh, Corey did ask for this and he didn't get it. I said, wow, way to go, mm -hmm. y'all. Way to go. Way to go. So, yeah. But, you're gonna thank you so much for talking to me, dear. Um, yeah, if any updates that you get, um, if you don't mind, please share with, because I want to help y'all keep this man, this young man's story out there in the public. You know, uh, at, least yeah, I can do, yeah. at least I can do that much to help Keep sharing this story out there in the public. And mm -hmm. dear, if you are still doing boots on the ground or you got people doing boots on the ground, thank you for that as well. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to know from you. You know, your thoughts on everything. Um, I know you were out there. You were one of the first ones I saw that was out there. Yeah. And, uh, well, I thank you so much for reaching out. And like we said, that the, the best thing that we can do is keep this story out in the forefront yes, and make sure that we make sure people remember Cody's name and we find Cody. I pray that we will find him safe and, you know, taller and, you know, and well. But um, either way, we have to bring him home. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we go, are you allowed to say what you're doing out there? Are you allowed to speak in public <laughs> and say what you're doing? I, of course I'm allowed to. Oh, we're going ahead. Well, let people want... know what you're doing out there then. If you want, if you want, if you want <laughs> but to. But I don't want people to think that's the reason why I was out there because it's really, you know, the matter of the heart and because gotcha. of the situation, I had to take a leadership position because that's what I do. Gotcha. But I am running for city council in Newport News, the South District, Newport News, Virginia. We're really working for things like transparency, accountability, and equity and communication because there's a lot of great programs that's offered at a local and also state level that just don't connect with the people who need it the most. So that's mm. why we do community walks and we have pop-up events and gotcha. we have a lot of cookouts during the summertime to get information out to people. <laughs> mm. Well, I I'm going to say this to you. Um, and I get what you're saying that, you know, people probably think, oh, that's what she out there for to get her numbers up or whatnot. But here, here's what I say to that. You got a lot of people who run up for that and want to even search at all. Yeah. They want to search yeah. at all. So uh, I would say to you, for you in the position that you're in trying to run for that, my ass off to you to even go out there and help them with the search. So I don't see mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it. You know, hey, you said mm -hmm. in the beginning, you as a mother, you come fan through this. So that's one of the things you feel like it's your due diligence to go out there and help with this search. So Absolutely. Again, and that's how we get yeah. the information out. I don't know if you looked at the rest of my social media, but um, we get information out using social media platforms mm -hmm. and door-to-door -door engagement. We're just meeting people where they are to, to change some lives, you know? So is there a latest, latest video that you put up about you uh, doing door-to-door -door knocks and thing? Uh, because, uh, um, one know. of the latest video that I put up is about Ridley Circle. So here in Newport News, we have um, one of our oldest 
public housing sites is being demolished and it's going to be placed with 26 income, mixed income housing. And there's a big revitalization project. So our goal is to make sure that there's not gentrification because that can happen if we're not paying attention to things like land ownership and the businesses that are coming into our community. Mm -hmm. But um, we have true revitalization. The people that are here, they're aware, the information is there. And like you said, um, you, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Absolutely. We know that's true, but we can make sure that there's equity in the communication of those resources. We can right. have it available for those people who want to do something and transform their lives. Right. So um, that's why I'm running for office. All right, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Well, good luck to you. And again, thank, thank you, you uh, for out there helping to search to help find this young man. Because that's who it really is about. It's about finding him. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, that's all I can say for now. You're going to thank you so much, love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You have a good evening. You too, dear. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is Miss Uganda uh, Jones. Uh, again, uh, some of y'all may remember her. Or some of y'all may not remember her. But when I first started hitting this story heavy, when I started playing video from Facebook, she was one of the first videos that I played, and that's when I first heard about the gold card thing, you know. So some of y'all may remember the, her video, and uh, and I told her I was going to get in contact with her, and uh, she finally hit me back, and uh, I'm glad she came on and shared her thoughts and things on this. And uh, and I'm going to give it to y'all. Let y'all hear this, and I want y'all, like I did the other one, I want y'all to share y'all thoughts on what y'all heard from her, you know, uh, what she think about what's going on here. And um, yeah, that's that on that. But in that though, again, the shift should not focus. It should always remain on Cody. And hopefully, at this point, I'm just gonna say this. Hopefully we can find Cody dead or alive. We prefer alive. But at this point, you know, we just want Cody to be found, period. And just put an end to this saga that's going on surrounding this young man. Uh, your man, Chris Thorns. Uh, thank you in advance for listening and, uh, Hey, let's keep hope alive. All right. Peace out.